Hello and welcome to my live stream tonight on the Facebook site, Your Spiritual Journey. And today we're talking about Lawrence's Out of Body Experience, Part 2, his trip to the Universal Library. Now, in Part 1, we left where he had this out of body experience as he was meditating on how Jesus must have felt on the night before he went to the cross on Calvary. And he, this angel came and said, would you like to see something cool? And he said, yes. And then he went and he went to like this college campus. And then we talked about where he was going up this step and then his eye kind of saw this reflection on some mica within the, within the steps. And then all of a sudden he was put into this different room and he saw this pulsing, vibrating beach, which was, I believe, the, the true representation of the universal fluid. And Spiritism tells us that universal fluid vibrates. And universal fluid is the be all and end all of everything that we create on in the physical universe and in the spiritual universe. And that the Spirits use that in different vibrations and compactions and speeds of rotation within, within all that to create different elements. So now first, before we begin, I'd like to ask everyone that I will put this Lawrence's out of body experience as part two. I will put this into YouTube and my BitChute channels. So please uh, subscribe, ring, ring the bell to YouTube or, uh, Subscribe to BitChute or BitTube. I'm also on the BitTube uh, channel. So uh, there's alternative to YouTube because I know YouTube is censoring many, many more videos all the time. And you never know what you're going to be able to see or not see on YouTube. I have bringing this is, and I've done part of my book, The Spirit World Talks to Us. This uh, whole story is in the book, The Spirit World Talks to Us, 12 Accounts from Near Death and Other Experiences. And I based upon my interpretation of people's near death uh, and other experiences upon spiritism. And spiritism was codified by Alan Kardec in 1850s, where he, and he actually wrote many, you know, five main books, which you can all get on PDF. You don't have to pay anything for them if you don't want. And if you'd like to learn more about Alan Kardec and what a brilliant fellow he was, uh, when he got interested in what spirits, what spirits were talking to him, uh, actually talking to mediums, he was not a medium. He codified 1,019 questions, and he didn't take those and didn't codify those as answers unless they were similar or the same answers from the same question, but with different mediums. Of course, then you can learn more about Alan Kardec in the movie Kardec, and it's on Netflix. It's, you can get it uh, in English, you can get it uh, in its native Portuguese, subtitled however you would like to see it. Uh, you, you can see it on Netflix. So please tell your friends about watching Netflix and watching the Kardec movie. It's well worth uh, uh, a, a watch. And it's, it will be, as Spiritism says, it, it, the central religions of the earth will take the tenets of Spiritism as their guiding direction, which is karma which you know many already do of course i'm not saying this is anything completely original what is original about spiritism is the detail the detail of the organization the processes what life is like really like on the other side of the veil that is what is revolutionary about spiritism it tells you why you're here on earth now let's continue with part two of lawrence's experience now we're going to talk about energy. We're going to talk about that energy is controlled by the force of will. And we have been told that, that will, faith, is measurable in the spirit world. So let's talk about that. Because once we understand our potential as spirits, everything else becomes more clear. We understand why we are on earth to get rid of our primitive emotions, replace those with advanced emotions. Why? Because energy is controlled by our will. And unless we are very disciplined and we get rid of our primitive emotions, how could we ever be uh, given the responsibility of that much power without discipline? So spirits create by thought 
and God created the spirit and the physical universes by thought. High spirits carried out the work of God by forming solar systems, planets, and life on Earth. How does thought transform into concrete action? How does an idea guide a planet or change the destiny of a single human? Now, the spirit Zabdiel presents how the spark of an idea affects matter in a chapter titled, titled The Science of Heaven. Now, Zabdiel is the spirit who sent a stream of communications to the Reverend G. Val Owen from November 3rd, 1913 to January 8th, 1914. All were published in a book which was first serialized in English papers in the 1920s. Ultimately, a book was published, The Life Beyond the Veil, which was a compilation of four previously published books. And the messages from Zabdiel are found in book two, titled The Highlands of Heavens. And that is a great book. I recommend everyone to read The Life Beyond the Veil. And of course, on my series of three books, Heaven and Below, Spirits in the Spirit Universe, and How Spirits Guide Us, is we I take Alan Kardec, I mean, sorry, Reverend G. Val Owen's writing, and I put them in different categories, and I expand upon what the spirits told Reverend G. Val Owen by what spirits told Alan Kardec, Chico Xavier, Devaldo Franco, Leon Denis. So I really try to flesh out everything that is available, at least in English, of uh, about the spirit world. That's why I think you would find it so interesting. So now let's talk about Energy equals universal fluid. So first, Zabdal defines what he means by the use of the word energy. That's what he says. Energy, as I now employ the word, is to be understood as that intermediary which couples up the motion of the will with the effect as displayed in the minds of men. We here are trained to this end that we may, by the motion of our wills, transmit by what we may call vibration our thoughts through the intervening spheres or states into the earth's plane it is this movement in vibration which i call energy so let's understand what he told us which it was just a lot right he's to, the spirit universe rests upon a cosmic energy platform called by spiritism universal fluid from this flows all forms of matter the will of a spirit, which we are, we are spirits. We may be relatively <clears throat> immature spirits now, but we are spirits and will someday be a pure spirit. The will of a spirit is able to modify the vibrational stage and structure of universal fluid. Zabdiel explains further. He's, this is what he says. When I use the term vibration, I do not merely mean oscillation to and fro alone but of movements which are sometimes elliptical, sometimes spiral, and sometimes a combination of these and other qualities. Now, this is from G. Val Owen in the 1910s and 20s. Ellen Kardec, in the Spirits book, supplies the definition of matter. This is what he says. Matter is the element which enchains spirit, the instrument which serves it, and upon which, at the same time, it exerts its action. So, hence... The force of a mind of a spirit controls and directs matter. And that which facilitates the command of matter by a spirit is universal fluid or energy, as Zabdiel defines it. Alan Kardec places universal fluid in the same context as Zabdiel when he reported that spirits told him, this is Alan Kardec, that the material element must be added the universal fluid, which plays the intermediary between spirit and matter the nature of the latter being too gross for the spirit to be able to act directly upon it. Although, from another point of view, this fluid may be classified as forming part of the material element. It is, nevertheless, distinguished from that element by certain special properties of its own. It is intermediary between spirit and matter under the directing action of a spirit to produce the infinite variety of things which you know as yet but a very small portion. This universal primitive or elementary fluid begin being the agent employed by a spirit in acting upon matter is the principle without matter would remain forever in a state of division and would never acquire the properties given to it by the state of ponderability. What is he telling us? Well, first, let's talk about ponderability. 
ponderability being the state upon which matter rests as directed by the thoughts of a spirit. The earth is a ponderable planet because it was created by the thoughts of spirits led at the time as we know by spiritism by Jesus Christ. Although, as our science did understands today, matter is never at rest. It is constantly in motion, vibrating, but to our eyes, it holds a constant form and is endowed with certain physical characteristics. Our current level of scientific discovery would agree with Zabdiel when he states, from this point of view, the atomic system of vibration, which has but of late been revealed to men of science. Remember, he wrote this in the 1910s, or, or gave this to uh, Reverend G. Bowen, psychograph, who psychographed it in the 1910s, and of other systems far away in space. The motion of the Earth around the sun, the motion of the molecules of the atoms, are vibrations. It matters not by what degree you measure them, or what the diameter of the orbit, they are of one in kind and in degree, only do they differ from each other. So he's telling us everything is made of universal fluid and everything is created by different degrees of vibration and density and, you know, motion. Now, let's, let's do a thought uh, experiment. Picture a rectangular piece of wood. Unseen by our sight, it is a mass of vibrating atoms and molecules. To us, it has weight and it is dense. It is wood and it is symmetrical because of the motions within and the composition of the universal fluid that directs it. Now, picture what would happen if the atomic elements were commanded to vibrate more rapidly to alter their shape. The rectangle would no longer be a rectangle and the wood would transform into another substance. Similar to as water changes to steam when heated, matter changes when the energy directed at it by the thoughts of a spirit into something slightly erratically different from whence it began. Zadnil explains what matter really is. Matters like, and give you an instance, matters what we see, right? Matter is the wall, matter is the table, matter is us. This is what Zabdiel says. Matter itself is the result of the transmutation of spiritual vibration into those of the grosser sort. And these later are now being analyzed by scientists who have come to the knowledge that matter is indeed the result of vibration and that no article of matter is still, but in ceaseless movement. That is correct, but not conclusive for it does not pursue the matter to the end of it. It were truer to say, not that matter is in vibration, but that matter is vibration, the results of vibration of a quality more refound, which is found not in the phenomenon of material things, but in those spheres proper to its quality. So hence, what he's telling us is matter is material waiting to be transformed by spiritually directed energy. Zabdiel then goes on and describes the process of alteration. That's what he says. But transmutation brings into any such system a change of movement, and the quality of movement being changed, there is also, and of necessity, a change of result. Thus we, acting always in perfect obedience to the laws laid down by those higher and wiser than ourselves, concentrate our wills on the movement of certain vibrations, which become deflected and transmuted into other qualities of vibration, and thus change is wrought. Now think of what he said. Think of the power of what he just said, that the, by the power of their will, they concentrate on something, they change the vibration, they move, change the movement, change the density, and then they, they change whatever was there before, a piece of wood, a house, a mountain, a river, a lake, and they transmute it. So also this modification is usually accomplished gradually and deliberately, step by step until the desired end state is attained. Well, after they're done, matter or universal fluid that was in one state is now in another state and in the spirit world there is no, no such thing as de de 
degradate, uh, degradation, sorry. <laughs> nothing decays, nothing rots away. It is there until another spirit decides to change it. It's more a matter of duration. Now, <clears throat> from the beginning of slight alterations brought on by the intended plan of a spirit or a group of spirits, all is created and guided. Zabdal tells us that from one, this one process, the singular talent for focusing energy on an object and transforming it, all else follows. This is what Zabdal says. It is by this method that we deal with the actions of men and in the course of nature in all its part. There are manifold classes and companies who have in charge the various departments of creation, mineral, vegetable, animal, human, terrestrial, solar, and stellar. Beyond this also, the stars are grouped together and dealt with by hierarchies qualified for that great task. Let me stop right there for a second. This is what's so great about spiritism, as I said before. It is, it is revealing how the spirit world works. It is revealing what type of jobs, what our potential is as we leave this earth, as we leave this training class that we're in. I'll carry on with this quote. It is by this same method then of the transmutation of energy that systems are gradually developed into worlds and these worlds furnish them with form and then enabled to produce vegetation and animal life. But this being so, you will note that all life and all development is consequent on the operation of spiritual energy, obeying the dictates of the will of spiritual beings. This once grasp, blind force disappears and intention takes its place. Intention of intelligent and powerful spiritual workers of various grades operating according to certain fixed laws, but within the bounds of laws, free and mighty. So this, I mean, this, com this completely violates our current scientific knowledge of the physical universe that there are natural laws that go in motion and there are natural ratios and mathematical formula that, that, you know, that dictates those laws. And yet what the reality is, is we are just interpreting that within our own, our own bounds of, of learning our own bounds of us being able to understand and comprehend these things. So we classify that and we classify pretty good. You know, we, we know the rotation of the earth around the sun and all those type of things. But the important one is to remember is you look at the sun, you look at the moon and the other planets, right? To look up at the night sky and see not random stars built within the confines of chaotic motion of matter spawned by the Big Bang. Instead, see creation as planned, creation as willed by the high lords and carried out by aphanics of lesser spirits. Everything we live upon and are to the very curvature of our skull and the capabilities of our sight has been carefully planned. Now, do they say, I want an earth that's going to pop up? No, the earth it, it took billions of years to form. So they use these laws. These, they're almost more like, you know, rules of programming, right? Rules of data and matter and how, you know, how you can form them, how you can change them and how things should change on their own, right? To let them off, you know, <clears throat> let the earth cool down, all that. It's, it must be so complicated that what I'm giving to you is, is probably just a small portion of what we'll understand and learn when we go back to the spirit world. But the main thing to understand is we are the direct result of deliberate objectives guided from on high, our lives in the same matter in which our physical form was molded, are molded by the desires of spirits who may include ourselves while we're in the spirit world. We are part and parcel of creating our learning curriculum, our plan. We were involved in the trials and obstacles we face on earth, but always with our free will intact to make choices and to suffer, either gladly or with remorse, the lessons offered to us so we too may be part of the cohort of spirits managing all life in the universe. And probably we would get to go to other universes also. 
The knowledge that we live in a world of malleable clay, which alters form and structure upon command, should give us strength, inner fortitude to understand that the vicissitudes of our life are all to a purpose. Everything we experience is not without meaning, for all is aimed with love and kindness. Worlds, nations, and races are born, forged by heat, and deteriorate, all for a design cause. Zabdiel reinforces this point. That's what he says. Thus you will see how little it matters that when the time comes for you to cast off the body of earth, you stand discarnate. Your earthly body was a body of vibrations and no more. Very well. You now have a body of vibrations more substantial and enduring because of a higher quality and near to the energizing will which brought it into existence and so sustains it. That body will serve you while you sojourn in the lower spheres, and when you have progress, that body will be transmitted into one still more permanent and of quality more sublime. This process will be repeated as the ages go by, and you proceed from glory to higher glory in the infinite reaches of progress before you. So he's telling us we are on earth for a short period in disposable suits, designed to enhance our educational opportunities. Make the most of what comes our way and learn what is being presented only by suffering through the stressful days and putting the good days in perspective can we cultivate the calm and wisdom to ascend. Now, let's get back to Lawrence. So, we left him in that room, right? He, Lawrence was in total awe, and he was inside that small, as he thought he was, a small fragment of mica within a block of granite, which had been shaped throughout centuries by the steps of students. He was transported back into his body so he could complete his forward motion of his legs and climb the steps to the library. So now he was starting to climb again. He continues climbing up the steps to the library, the doors are massive, 12 feet tall. They go in and begin walking to the back. Still, the high spirit has only said that first sentence to Lawrence. You want to see something cool? Nothing else. That's all he said so far. Together, they see the librarian turn right and walk a further 50 feet, then turn left and saunter another 120 feet. Lawrence sits at a table on a chair. At this point, Lawrence decides to call the high spirit George. He stands next to Lawrence, and George asks, asks Lawrence, would you like to read a book? And Lawrence, every ready, says, yes. So, picture Lawrence sitting at a table made of wood, for it seems everything in the library is made of wood. The table is in the middle of a rather, rather large space. The bookshelves are at least 12 feet away from the table and chairs. And since George told him to read a book, he does what is natural to him and grabs a book, all normal, except in his out-of-body experience, he doesn't get up from the chair. He extends his arm 12 feet and he selected a book as if he was in a science fiction movie where one of the characters could elongate his limbs at will. Lawrence did the same. Upon retrieving the book, his arm returned to normal. It all seemed commonplace at the time. Throughout all of this, George st stood mute. Lawrence opened the book and turned pages faster than a blur, and he understood everything. Everything, not just the written contact, content, but the author's original intention and emotional state at the time the book was written. Now, one could believe that this phenomenon, this is what I love looking at these experiences and the NOBEs and looking at them through the lens of spiritism because these are all backed up by other people's experiences and by spiritism. So you could believe this was just a figment of Lawrence's imagination. That's a dream, his arm extended, and he read the book really fast. And not only did he read the book, but he understood what the author's intention, his emotional state, everything. Well, there are two examples of people who have lived on earth who have had similar abilities. First, the American Christian mystic, mystic Edgar Casey, who could put a book underneath his pillow, wake up the next morning and know the context. Second, and these have all been verified by other people, the great Brazilian spiritist medium, Francisco C. Xavier, 
He could lay his hands on a book or magazine, understand the context, the contents, and the state of the author. Chico didn't understand he could do it. He had no idea, but he could. Chico saw Pierre Sacrograph more than 450 books, almost 500 by his lifetime. Now it's over 500 after they've taken his writings and created more books. But almost so in his lifetime, four, more than 450 telling us about the spirit realm. In one of his books, In the Greater World, the spirit Henri Luis, who was the spirit author of the book, is talking about a medium's frontal lobes and how they are aw washed with light to Andre's spiritual eyes. His mentor tells him something interesting about these frontal lobes. This is what he, his, Andre's mentor told him. In the frontal lobes, Andre, the physical exteriorization of important paraspiritual centers, there are millions of cells waiting for human effort in the area of spiritualization in order to become operative. Not one of the most daring thinkers of humankind from ancient times up to now has ever managed to use a tenth of them. They are energies of a virgin field, which the soul will gain not only through evolutionary continuity, but also through self-education, moral improvement, and sublime elevation. My friend, only a living and revealing faith can initiate such an endeavor as an indispensable trailblazing light for individual progress. So this is why you need to study spiritism. This is why you need to be more spiritual and take time to not only just love other people, but you have to understand why you're here and understand so many more things. The spirit world doesn't just equip us with faculties without a purpose. My, hypo my hypothesis is that at some future state of our planet, probably when we become a regenerative, regenerative or happy world, the powers of our mind will be unlocked, but also by ourselves. Then we shall, like Lawrence, be able to absorb a book or any data at lightning speed. Let's get back to Lawrence. After finishing the book, the, world, the word reading isn't correct to use since Lawrence practically ingested the book. He felt his awareness state was even more elevated. Now, he was not allowed to retain any memory of what the book said. The spirit realm did not allow him to retain its contents. This is a common theme again in near-death experiences. The spirit world will let you recall what you need, no more, no less, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately, I don't know. Next, Lawrence, he looked up to George, who didn't seem as stoic and, uh, and unreadable as before. Lawrence sensed a bit more openness, but still no emotion. He thought he saw a hidden smile. Then this happened. George said to Lawrence, are you ready to go? And then this is what Lawrence told me. I started to push the chair back. The calves of my leg pushed against the chair, against the wood of the rungs at the bottom of the chair. The vibration flows from the wall about 30 to 40 feet away. The wall is wood. The vibrations come back. My left ear hears, hears the return of the vibrations before the right ear. Then I realize my head is cocked a little bit to the left in relation to the wall. Therefore, I should hear one vibration before the other. Again, this is all backed up by spiritism. We are told that on earth, our senses are like one eighth. We can only tell about one eighth of the world around us and our sen senses are, you know, we can't hear as much, we can't see all the different, you know, wavelengths and, and spectrums of color. Again, this is all backed up by what we have been told by spirits to spiritist mediums. So think of that. He, he had an infinitesimal angle of the head, which translated into a minute difference in distance between the left and the right ears, and the wooden wall is fully realized by Lawrence's new sensitivity. This is how you shall be when you return to your real life, your life as an immortal spirit. So after Lawrence experiences new heightened sensitivity, he rose and walked out, walked out the left door, of the double doors of the library. This time George opens the door and both George and Lawrence stand out on the landing. Lawrence is outside once again, enjoying the vast college campus. Its greenery, the clear paths and trails was closely cut lawns. Lawrence spots a woman who is walking up the sidewalk and is slowly turning to walk up the steps. Whereupon George thinks, 
Lawrence, here's George's thoughts in his mind. He says, Larry, do you think she read that book? And, and then Larry, Lawrence said, probably not. Then George says, in a neutral manner, do you think you are better than she because you have read that book? And then, and then Lawrence says, no. Now, when Lawrence told me this, I smiled and realized immediately that before I understood spiritism, I too would have said no, but only because it was the correct thing to say, not that I believed it. For in my mind, I would have thought, of course I am better. After all, I took the trouble to read the book. She didn't, therefore I'm better. And I believe the same sort of thinking went through Lawrence's mind, but then after he said no, he truly realized that that was the right answer, not just the correct answer, but the right, the absolute true response. Right after Lawrence said no, he felt no sense of judgment, no sense of George pondering the answer. Instead, he felt lighter. He felt a burden was lifted because before his no was not really true, but now it became true. Lawrence for the first time felt it in every fiber of his body. No greater gift could have been bestowed upon Lawrence. Then George says, Lawrence, there will be a time when your curiosity will gain you access to the infinite library of the universe. And then Lawrence told me as I was talking to him, he says, words are more than words. They are a map for you to a place of understanding. As I listened to George, each word brought me to a place. As he spoke to me, I went to the Universal Library. Then I came back and noticed that George had another hidden smile. I came back lighter, less dense. I couldn't remember a thing from my visit. Then George disappeared. Lawrence woke up and cried. Now that is a truly remarkable experience. And he, Lawrence, witnessed the inner workings of the universal elements called universal fluid by spiritism. He felt the immense power and capability that life as a spirit provided. He inhaled knowledge at an astounding rate. And lastly, most importantly of all, he was taught a lesson. Now, our physicists, mathematicians, and computer scientists are all trying to figure out the basic, basic building blocks of the universe. The theory of everything is still elusive. Now, while I don't pretend to understand the math behind their theories, I do believe as we become more adept at understanding computers, data storage, transmission, and artificial intelligence, all of this in combination with knowledge of our physical universe will begin to expose the truth. We, the physical and the superior plane, spiritual universes, are the logical constructs of God and through the work of his minions of other spirits, much higher than us, of course. First, there existed a timeless dimension. Then to better prepare and train intelligent servitors, a physical plane was created to provide the required environment to mold our character, to improve our character. From the beads, the vibrations, the orbs of energy come everything, including us. We are at the base self-improving programs who learn through stimuli. Lawrence came away with a similar conclusion. We are the sum total of what we believe, and we can only see and reason through the prisms that we think we have. To truly modify ourselves, to alter our programming at the most root level, we need to discern the truth. Now, Lawrence's work had explained what he saw. He called the COS, the Conscious Operating System. And Lawrence explained to me what he discovered. This is what he says. There is a universal operating system by which we all live in, with, and because of. We need to discern the difference between the belief systems that we create and the true reality. Do we listen to what we want to believe or do we search out the real truth as uncomfortable as it may be? Now, interestingly, as he said that, when I was given a... Uh, intonation one and it was part of the intonation was i was uh, a medium gave that to me from a message from high spirit is one of the says is for me to search after the truth the real truth and she also wrote to it says is that god wants us to know the spirit world wants to know there's no such thing as a truly evil person or truly perfect person whatever we're all we're all shades and but we all get better as we go 
and also, to, so not only that, is that I believe, and as you know, Lawrence explains it one way, my way of explaining it is we are like this app. Think of a cell phone. And a cell phone has this basic operating system. And as it becomes more sophisticated, and you add more memory and more applications, you can do more things. You can go out and retrieve data from further away from different places. You can communicate, you can do all sorts of things. We are at base, a logical construct. We are given a body that we think of what we look like through all of our thousands and hundreds of thousands. I don't know how many different lives of training we have. And then we're trained on these physical worlds and that is the outside stimuli. The outside stimuli are the trials and tribulations we are going through to make changes to our character and personality. And in fact, you see this word many, many times. They, they, they don't say so-and-so. They say the personality. And they identify us as a distinct personality. Now, why is that? Well, as a spirit, I can look however I want to. I can dress however I want to. In fact, in one of the books, um, the uh, Memoirs of a Suicide, this one spirit walked onto the stage as looking as one thing, and then he, as he was walking, he transformed himself into another person, a person who had a relation with the other person on the stage who he didn't know. So you can't say, oh, that spirit with uh, you know, dark hair and green eyes and he's about 5'10". No, that spirit can be any size he wants. He can be, you know, he can, you know, and I've read the spirits with like, you know, this kind of a bluish tint or a, a kind of a gold, you know, skin color and, and you know, all sorts of different things that you can look how you want to look. So you can't, you can't say a spirit looks like this. This is why I also would just like to stay, you know, for, you know, as an aside, this is why this whole thing about, you know, people worrying about different races and different cultures. It's all unimportant. All, all, all this is, all this, this is different races, different cultures, different, you know, whatever you are in as different economic you know, levels of what you're born in. It's all there to teach you something. And it's all unimportant because we're all spirits and everyone is learning something that they're supposed to learn in whatever shape or form physically they are in at that moment. But when they are out of that, diving suit that thick heavy suit they are a spirit they look at however they want to look and they look how they want to look through all this different stimuli and life after life it has been planned for us and also we're probably part of it by the spirit world so again i believe we are a logical construct and that we and that we our job here on earth <laughs> is to improve ourselves and to improve the beauty of that of of that personality because we are all unique personality this is the genius of god and the system he created if god wanted to create everyone perfect and the same he could have created us all the same instead he gave all of us free will and that free will, if you want to find a reason for all the chaos and inhumanity to other men on earth, is because we have free will. God could have made us perfect and all nice people, all wonderful people. We've all been boring as whatever. and We wouldn't have had any new ideas or anything. Instead, we have free will. That means that we can be primitive. We can be irresponsible. We can be horrible to each other. But eventually, through eons and eons of training we become we get rid of our primitive emotions and we replace them with advanced emotions so i'd like to end this with a poem by lawrence and this, this is what he says uh paradise found this is his poem deception past the paradise lost humanity pays an identity cost facts are fiction truth are lies these are the beliefs that filter our eyes Change your beliefs within your brain to create what your heart does yearn to gain. Beliefs are illusions of the truth they've hid, but the truth is a reality of what truth actually did. Change your lenses and you will change what you see. Paradise is found. Man's to be free. And that was uh, written by, 
by Lawrence uh, in 2014. So it was a wonderful, wonderful poem. And it, it, it is, a, it's just amazing um, story that he, you know, I mean, experience, I didn't say story, experience that he went through. So if you would like to uh, read more about people's NDEs, there's my book, The Spirit World Talks to Us, 12 Accounts from <clears throat> Near Death and Other Experiences. Now, if you would like to really learn more about the spirit universe and what I've talked about here, I recommend you read my series of three books, Heaven and Below, which talks about heaven, uh, the, <clears throat> around, the areas of the round the earth below heaven, talks about Jesus Christ as he is in heaven. And then the next book is Spirits and... Oh, Put down, took down the wrong thing. Let's find it again. Is spirits in the spirit universe, book two. And that talks about the spirits, the attributes of a spirit, how we go through education, how to become perfected spirits. It tells you what you're going to go through when you leave this body and you rise in heaven. And there are multiple levels in heaven and how you get there and what you will become. And when you come, go from one level to another, you don't just get a piece of paper saying you graduated. You actually get more power, more attributes. And then the last book of the series is how we are guided by spirits, how spirits guide us on earth, how the earth is guided, and how the earth will change from a planet of regeneration to a planet of, I'm sorry, change from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration. So I want to say, everyone, Thanks for listening to me. God bless. God bless.